What's up, YouTube? Today, we got something different. No MLB The Show. Instead, I'm going to start a new series ranking the top 10 players at each position. I figured which one should we go with first, but the most controversial, the most loaded, and that's shortstop. So today, we're going to be breaking down my top 10, in my opinion, who they are going into the 2021 season. At number 10, we got Glaber Torres. All right, some of you may be like, Glaber, really? His defense is so bad. And yes, his defense at shortstop is awful nobody's ever gonna say it's not he's more of a second baseman in my opinion but his bat plays anywhere his 162 game average so far in his career he's averaging 34 homers a season 96 rbis a batting average of 271 on base percentage of 340 a slugging of 493 overall ops of 834 that's gonna get it done ops plus 122 the guy can mash and in my opinion you put that bat in there i don't care if he makes 27 airs if his defensive run save is negative nine if he's bashing 38 39 homers that bat's gonna play and he's coming in at number 10 on my list at number nine it's the man from up north that's right Bo Bichette and I know you're gonna say wow Buck Bo Bichette at number nine he's only played one full season and it wasn't even a full season it was really only a shortened season but that's okay because Bo mashed in that season he had five homers batting average of 301 drove in 23 runs stole four bases 512 slugging 840 OPS and 127 OPS plus the man can bash and he's only going to get better I believe going into this season He's going to be the shortstop for Toronto. He can field a little bit, not too bad, and he's only going to get better. I like Bo Bichette a lot, and I think he's going to move up this list in the future. All right, coming in at number eight, it's Tim Anderson of the Chicago White Sox. Tim is an absolute monster for Chicago. I love him a lot. I get to watch him a lot here uh, since I live in central Illinois. I absolutely love watching him play. He plays the game hard. He plays the game well. And his stats are ridiculous and getting better every season, it seems. Uh, the last two seasons, he's hit 335, 322. He's hit, he's been mashing 20, 18, and 10 homers. You remember the 10 homers is in a shortened season, though. Uh, he's been averaging about 60 RBIs a season the last three years. And his OPS plus just continues to rise every season 87 128 141 the last three years ops 687 865 886 the last three years and he's not really going to hurt you defensively either he plays a nice solid shortstop uh defensively and last season he actually finished seventh in the mvp voting and he won a silver slugger at shortstop so tim anderson to me deserves to be in the top 10 and he's slotted pretty nicely i think at number eight at number seven, here's where it starts to get dicey. There's so many good shortstops, it's crazy. Uh, I'm gonna put Trey Turner at number seven, and I think he could be higher on some people's lists. He might be lower, I don't know, but this is where I have him slotted. Trey is another one of those shortstops. Seems to be getting better every season as he gets older. Uh, the last three years, he's averaging 19, 19, and 12 homers. He steals bases. Uh, his 162 game average is 51 stolen bases and in a game where stolen bases anymore isn't all that important or doesn't seem like it's that important he's still doing it uh, he also averages 296 353 on base percentage slugs 480 and an 833 ops so far in his career over 162 game season and 115 ops plus the guy can field the guy can run the guy does it all he finished seventh in the mvp voting last year he almost won a rookie of the year in 2016, finished second. Um, and I just think he's gonna continue to get better. I almost wanted to put him higher, but the shortstops ahead of him are so good too. It's really difficult uh, to do this top 10. And there's another five or six or seven shortstops outside the top 10 that can have an argument to be in this top 10. So it's crazy. At number six, I got the man, the myth, the legend, one of my favorite players to use in MLB The Show, Mr. Corey Seager. Corey was a stud, an absolute animal in the postseason for the Dodgers, helped carry them to a World Series championship, and his bat is only going to continue to get better. He kind of fell off a little bit in 2018, and people kind of forgot about him. In the last two seasons, he's really started to pick it back up. His 162 game average, 295 batting average, 362 on base percentage, slugging 500, even 500. OPS of 863 and OPS plus of 129. That's pretty impressive. Um, he doesn't really run, but he can mash. 
and he can do a little bit of fielding shortstop. He's not too bad. He's won a sil uh, two silver sluggers in his career. He's finished in the top 20 in MVP voting. Uh, that's a mouthful. Three times. He's a two-time all-star. The kid is a stud, and he's definitely the best of the Seegers. No doubt about it. Sorry, Clutch. But Corey Seager is my pick to finish just outside the top five at number six. Top five coming up. All right, kicking off the top five, it's Xander Bogart to the Boston Red Sox. This kid can absolutely rake. And his defense is actually picking up. That's been the one knock on him. Uh, so far early in his career is his defense is not very good but it's actually gotten better and that's helped him get into the top five his overall he's been in the league for eight years now so i really don't want to do his eight you know his 162 game average but the last couple seasons he slugged 23 and 33 in last season 11 of course in a shortened season he's averaging over 100 rbis he's still on a few bases you know he's going to hit for a decent average you know 285 to 310 his uh, slugging is around 550 average over the last three seasons, which is pretty darn good. And his OPS plus the last three years, 135, 140, and 131 is absolutely crazy. He's a two-time All-Star. He's finished in the top 20 in the MVP voting three times. He's won three Silver Sluggers. The guy can flat out hit. And I know this is going to make Join the Sith very happy because I know he's a Red Sox fan. And I know he's been after me about having him in the top five. And there he is in your top five. Coming in at number four, this might be a little controversial to some people, but I have Javi Baez still in the top five at number four. And I just believe that last season was an absolute fluke. Before last season, Javi was mashing, averaging 32 homers a season, a little over 100 RBIs. He steals between, you know, 10, 20 bases a year. He was slugging in the 550s, OPS, you know, high 800s, OPS plus 129, 115. He was a two-time All-Star. He's won a gold glove last year. Um, he's won a silver slugger, and he finished second in the MVP just in 2018. The guy is an absolute stud. In my opinion, coming into last year, he was arguably the number two shortstop easily, right behind Lindor. Uh, and, and last year was just awful. He'll be the first one to admit it. And a lot of people think it has to do with the fact that there wasn't any fans in the stands and he plays up, you know, to all that with the, with the crowd noise and the crowd reaction. And I think it really, really affected him last season. And hopefully we'll get some fans in the stands because Javi is one of my favorite players in baseball. Yes, I'm a Cardinal fan, but Javi Baez is an absolute beast and he's a lot of fun to watch play the game of baseball. He plays it hard. He plays it the right way and he's one of my favorite players and he's number four in my top 10 shortstops coming into 2021 at number three the man from colorado a guy i would love to see in st louis trevor story trevor does it all he can field he can mash he can run to me he's oh, so good i would love to see him in a st louis cardinal uniform i don't think it'll happen I don't think it'll happen. I know they've talked about moving him. I just don't see it happening. And I definitely don't see it happen to St. Louis. But anyways, let's get to the stats. This kid, over the last five seasons, 27, 24, 37, 35, and then short in season, 11 homers last year. He's averaging a little over 100 RBIs. Uh, he steals bases. He averages 21 a season. That's ridiculous from the shortstop. I love it. Uh, he slugs. 535 in his career right now uh, 877 OPS and a 114 OPS plus you're talking about a two-time all-star three times finishing the top 12 in the MVP voting he finished fourth in rookie of the year and he's a two-time silver slugger this guy can also field I think he's gonna win some gold gloves I'm not sure how he hasn't won yet one yet I know there's some really good gloves in the National League Paul DeYoung's got a good glove Avi Baez of course uh, you know, it has a good glove. Tatis is going to have a good glove, I think. Uh, Trey Turner. So, you know, he's got a lot of, of other good fielders in the National League. But I really do believe that Trevor is going to win a gold glove. I don't think it's going to be in Colorado, though. I think he's going to be moved at some point. Um, but that offense will play anywhere. And his glove will definitely play anywhere. And that speed plays anywhere. Trevor Story, definitely a top three shortstop, in my opinion, going into this season. At number two. I know this might be a little bit high because it's still early in his career and some people might think it's high, but I don't. I arguably think he's going to be battling for the number one spot this season, and that's Fernando Tatis Jr. Tatis is one of the scariest bats to face in baseball, in my opinion. He had a pretty decent postseason, but overall, he can rake. 
This kid has also got pretty good glove. And I think it's only going to be better. And I think he's going to be one of the best fielding shortstops in the game. He finished third in the rookie of the year voting in 2019. Finished fourth in the MVP last season in his second year. Won a silver slugger. Uh, last year, he hit 937 OPS, 571 slugging. It's crazy. 155 OPS plus, 154 of the previous season. He's going to hit about 300, it looks like. He steals bases. He can run. He had six triples in 2019. Um, he had 22 homers in 2019. 17 in a shortened season last year. Let that sink in. 17. And he gets on base. He's uh, averaging 374 in his first two season on base percentage. Uh, the guy is an absolute monster. He does it all. And he's probably the most exciting player in baseball, in my opinion. And somebody I would love to be able to watch every day in St. Louis. But that's not going to happen because the Cardinals blew that like a lot of other teams did. His dad did. His dad played in St. Louis, though. Two grand slams, remember, in one inning. That's insane. And I think you're going to see much, much more insanity out of this kid's bat in the future. Only one spot left, and that is for the best shortstop in baseball, in my opinion, is still Francisco Lindor, and now he's going to the Mets. Holy crap. Lindor basically does it all. He's got a glove, he's got an arm, he can run, and he can mash. Francisco has been the best shortstop in baseball the last four seasons, at least in my opinion. And I don't know if that's going to stop, especially going and playing for the Mets now. I think it's only going to get better. And I really think that's a good spot for him to be, especially if they can re-sign him. Anywho, he finished second in the Rookie of the Year in 2015. He's a four-time All-Star. He's finished in the top 10 in MVP three times, four times in the top 15. He's got three gold gloves, two silver sluggers, and notwithstanding last season, which was a down year for a lot of people, and I don't really put much weight in last season at all. The previous three seasons, you're talking about 33, 38, and 32 home runs, averaging right around 90 RBIs. It's about 285 with the bat during that time. He slugs over 500. His OPS is over 870. His OPS plus reached as high as 132 in 2018. He can run a little bit, although he doesn't necessarily, you know, steal 50 bags a year. He's gotten as high as 25, and he averages right around 21 over 162 game season. Francisco Lindor is the player that everybody wants on their team, especially up the middle. And in my opinion, Francisco Lindor is the best shortstop still in baseball. I love this guy. I know Cleveland's going to miss him. I know my friends that are Indians fans are going to miss him. And it truly sucks that their owner is horrible. But the Mets are going to pick up the best shortstop in baseball. All right, guys, there it is. There's my top 10 shortstops. I'm going to be releasing every position probably one or two a week just depends because i'm really having fun with this franchise that we're doing uh but shortstop was the deepest in my opinion it's the hardest to rank uh there's so many people that could be in the top five in my opinion you know that that four or five spot and then there's a ton that could be in the top 10 guys that aren't even included uh, you know like I, I started this video with it's crazy how deep shortstop is anyways if you like the video make sure to hit that thumbs up button i'd appreciate it also you know while you're here hit that subscribe button it's free just click it real simple and you can get all the notifications for all my future videos um and if you have any comments about my rankings i'm sure you will leave any feedback below i'm open to any kind of you know criticism any kind of feedback at all because in, at the end of the day it's, it's just opinion um stats do play a part in it but, you know, there's there's arguments made for lots of players to be in this top 10, in my opinion, at least at shortstop. Other positions, I think, are pretty cut and dry. But shortstop, there's other players that could probably make the top 10 and have, have legitimate arguments, and I have no argument about that at all. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to catch me on Twitch every day, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. Central Time till 3 p.m. And you can also follow me on Twitter. Links are in the description below. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Peace out.